and I mean, think about it. This is, this is the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence together. It's this thin. These were the rules that the founders set. And now we get 80,000 pages added to the Federal Register every year. I mean, this is what built America. The 80,000 pages don't help this, but they keep growing up. Now, the same student, A.D. Steinbach, who I cited, she goes on to say, now my generation's been labeled as apathetic and self-absorbed. And when I was your age, I viewed that as a problem. I no longer do. I, I now think that's a good thing. <laughs> because most of your friends don't know anything. And I'm OK if they don't vote. Because I didn't know anything. I mean, I was older than you. I went to Princeton, where supposedly I learned a lot. And when I graduated, I didn't know anything. I was taught that government could solve poverty and make the world better. Had I bothered to vote then, had I been political instead of looking to meet girls, I, I would have been destructive to America. So I think some apathy is a good thing. And there, there is a saying that 1% that of the people in America, some of you, most of you, make things happen. And 9% of America watches those people make things happen. Those are the people watching CNN and Fox. And then 90% of America uh, wake up in the morning and they say, what happened? <laughs> and I don't think that's a problem. I think that's a sign of a good country, that you have lives. And you know, in, in horrible countries, everybody votes because your life's at stake. It's good to live in a country where, you, where things are going pretty well and you can be apathetic. And apathy can be a good thing because why is America, of all these countries in the world, and six billion people on Earth, and most of them live in horrible poverty that you would find awful? Two billion of them live on a buck or two a day. The uh, people living on the Western levels of wealth are maybe 12% of the world. So why is that? How come America thrives? when most of the world struggles, and we're a new country? How come we got rich? And I say this to high school kids, and they say, well, it's because America's a democracy. And we were a new country. We have a lot of natural resources. And that's true, and democracy's great. Um, but India is a democracy, too. And India's been poor. It has lots of natural resources. And the high school students say, well, India's overpopulated. And that's the image, and that's been blamed for poverty in India. Um, but it's not true. The population density of India is the same as that of New Jersey. And New Jersey's doing OK. <laughs> All right, some of you don't agree with that, but <laughs> it's doing better than India. It's not about population <laughs> density. Holland has even greater population density. And then look at. Look at Hong Kong. Hong Kong doesn't even have democracy. They had the British rulers and the communist Chinese. They don't have any natural resources. They're just a rock. And yet Hong Kong went from third world desperate poverty to our level of wealth, which they have now, in just 50 years. They have the secret to prosperity. Wouldn't the whole world benefit from that? What did Hong Kong have? No natural resources, no democracy, but they had economic freedom because the British rulers enforced rule of law. That's important. You need rule of law. You need someone to make sure that I don't kill you or take your stuff. Same rule you learn in kindergarten. Don't hurt other people or take their stuff. And the worst places to live are the places that don't have rule of law, the African country where you're afraid to open a factory to build something because maybe your neighbor will steal what you make or the dictator will take your whole factory. So you need rule of law. But then after that, the British rulers basically sat around and drank tea. <laughs> they left the people of Hong Kong alone. And free people left alone with rule of law and right to contract, they made themselves rich. That's what economic freedom does. There are these rankings of countries by economic freedom, and the places that have more 
prosper and there are nice places to live. New Zealand, Australia, Switzerland, Canada, the United States. Places with less economic freedom are awful places to live like Cuba and Zimbabwe. Economic freedom works. I mean, uh, one of the other essays I read by, I'm gonna mess up your name, Shashnat Chu from Edison, New Jersey, he wrote about industry. Economic freedom allows industry to happen, which is what allows us to make our lives better. This is capitalism that we take for granted in America and in many colleges you'll go to, they will vilify it as unfair, evil. And yet, we shouldn't because it does wonderful things and we take it for granted. We go to the supermarket and there are 30,000 products and they are under unbelievably cheap and they almost never poison you. <laughs> Government management can't do that. We take it for granted that we can go to a foreign country, stick a piece of plastic in the wall and cash will come out. <laughs> and you can take that same piece of plastic and hand it to a total stranger who doesn't even speak English and he'll rent you a car for a week. <laughs> and when you get home, Visa or MasterCard will have the accounting correct to the penny. We just accept that. But it's a miracle of free markets and capitalism and limited government. I mean, government can't even count the votes correctly. <laughs> and now we want government to run health care? I don't think that's a good idea. The Bill of Rights and the Constitution laid it out for us if we would just listen. Limited government, economic freedom, lift people up. And I thank you for fighting for these principles that made our lives good. Thank you very much.